Welcome to the third video in the foundation series. We're going to get started right away. You've already imported your files and renamed them using Adobe Bridge. You've opened them up in Camera Raw and made some fine adjustments to them. We're going to open those files back up in Camera Raw and then open them up into Photoshop. So right click on your image. We're going to open up in Camera Raw. And if you look, I've already made adjustments to this file. It shows over here on the right. One of the first things we're going to do before we open up in Photoshop is make sure that our settings are correct to get the maximum image that we can use. If you look down at the bottom here of Camera Raw, there's this little line that says, on mine, it says Adobe RGB 1998 16-bit gives you the size of the image and also the PPI. We're going to click on that and a little dialog box is going to open up. And you'll have space, depth, size, resolution, and s some other information right down here. The first line is your color space. You want to set that for Adobe RGB. That's pretty much a standard in the industry and will give you a really good color gamut and most monitors can display most of the colors that are in this gamut. Uh, depth, I would recommend doing 16-bit as this gives you a lot more color information in your file. We can get into that until a later date. If you want to work with the 8-bit, you can. 16-bit just gives you a lot more color information when you make adjustments in levels and other features like that in Photoshop. Size, uh, I have mine defaulted to the standard size that the camera takes. In my case, it's 21 megapixel. Um, if you knew you were going to be blowing this image up, you could go with the larger one. Uh, this would uh, do camera raw adjustments instead of using Photoshop to upsize. If you know you're just doing like four by sixes or something like that, you could choose one of these here. All of this can be done in Photoshop also. I usually keep it right at the standard at 21 megapixel. Uh, resolution, yeah, 240 is the default. I leave it there. You can change this in Photoshop if you need to. Depending on what printer you're using, you can change this to match your printer. Other than that, everything else here we're going to leave alone. We won't get into the sharpening or opening Photoshop as smart objects in this video. Just click OK. Now that we have our preferences set up, we're going to open the image into Photoshop. As you can see, I have my image open here in Photoshop. One of the first things I usually do in Photoshop is I set my rulers on. Uh, you can do that by going up to View, and you can go down, and you have this little thing down here, you know, Rulers. You can do Control-R if you're into shortcuts. You just click on that. Mine's already on, and that will give you the rulers up here. Now, what the rulers will do is not only show you the size of your image, but it allows you to click on the ruler. You push down with the left mouse button, and you can drag a line out onto your image. And this is a guideline. This will come in handy if you're trying to straighten out buildings, horizon lines, or anything like that. Uh, you can just click on the ruler again, drag it down. Let's say you want to see if your horizon straight, like ours is nice and straight right there. Very handy tool. And the same thing works with the vertical. You can grab this and you can drag it over. I know that tree was crooked from the get-go, so I'm not too concerned about that. And if you ever want to get rid of all of these, you can just click up the view again and go down and go clear guides. But that's very handy to know where those guides are, and it's easier to get to them if you have the rulers showing. All right, now let's go over the basic layout of Photoshop CS5. Uh, at the top, you have your drop-down menus. Uh, if you don't have Extended, you won't have Analyst or 3D. These only come with Extended. Right next to this, you have a little button here, which, which will take you back to Bridge, and then they have Mini Bridge. Uh, zoom Level. Arrange documents. It'll let you, if you have multiple documents, gives you uh, different ways of cascading them, tiling them, stuff like that. Uh, this is uh, screen modes. Over here on the right, you have uh, workspaces. This shows you how your arrangement of your items are on your computer. Uh, I have it defaulted to essentials. It works well for me. There's other ones that you can choose here if you want. Design, painting. Play around with them. See if there's one in particular that you like and uh, use that. And now here on the right, you have your panels. Uh, I have color swatches. Now these are all defaulted. I really haven't done anything with these. Uh, if yours pops up a little different, you can put the panels up here that you want. All these panels can be found under the window drop-down menu up top here. And you can see the ones that are opened up with the check marks here. And if you find that you're using a panel a lot and it's not open, open it up and Stick it right over here onto the side. Over here on the left is the toolbar. You'll be going to this bar a lot. Uh, I've learned most of the shortcut keys to a lot of these things, and I recommend that you do the same thing because it makes it a lot easier. But this is essentially where all your tools are that you're going to be using for brushes, selections, gradients, erasers. All this stuff is found over here. Uh, you can do this in two modes. If you double click on the top bar here, you can go to a double bar, which some people prefer, or like I like more workspace, so I got it as a single bar. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to show you is the adjustment panel. Uh, for the basics and getting started, this little panel over here will help out tremendously. 
as you can see it's got everything that you need to make adjustments now some of you may notice that some of these adjustments we were able to do in camera raw like brightness contrast we did in camera raw but let's say you get the image open up here and you don't quite like it you can always click on it and it will make a new layer down here in the layer panel and you can make adjustments here and the same thing with the contrast let's say you make these adjustments and you go no I was pretty happy with it from the get-go you can click on this little trash can and it'll tell you you were sure you want to delete this layer and you go yes and the layer goes right in the trash uh, you have a, a levels where you can play with this make it a little darker a little brighter bring in the whites again I was pretty happy with it from the get-go so I'm not gonna do anything with that but that gives you some idea these things here each will open up an individual layer to make adjustments with that you can go back to later later and adjust which makes them wonderful okay another thing in this adjustment panels is Photoshop has a lot of built-in presets and that's all these little drop downs right here if you look they got levels preset so if you want to make it darker you can click on that and see it automatically makes a layer with the adjustments built into it and if you don't like that one you can see it makes all those presets are built right into this drop down you can go no I want to lighten the shadows uh, no I think I want to increase the contrast so each one of these presets will let you do things and sometimes it's perfect you can just do stuff and you go wow I like that uh, we're not going to do anything with this right now we're going to delete it but I just wanted to show you those presets and it works for curves exposures use saturation you see all these different ones now the next area here is the layer panel and the layer panel one of the first things I like to do uh, when I open up an image is to make a copy of my original file and I do all my adjustments to the copy so the fastest way to do this is you take the layer you right you left click on it and you drag it down to this little folded icon down here and that creates a new layer and we'll call it a background copy automatically now you could also select that original one called background right click on it and make a duplicate layer and this gives you a little more options you could rename it or anything but you see it just makes another copy and if you decide you don't want a copy or you don't like a layer you just take it and bring it down to that little trash can and it goes away now I'll make sure that I have that layer selected and any adjustments that I do like spotting or sharpening will be done to that layer and I can always shut that layer off by shutting off the little eyeball and I can see any adjustments done to the back so let's just do something really quick here we'll crank that brightness up and we'll click on it and you notice oh nothing changes that's because this layer is affecting both layers underneath it whatever layers on the top for an adjustment is going to affect all the layers underneath it so if you want it to affect just one layer the trick is to push down the alt key on a PC or a Mac and you'll see this little icon pop up and then you left click and it will lock those two layers together now when you shut off that layer you can see the difference between the original and the new one and again if you don't like that particular thing you can just bring it down trash it so there's a quick taste of that all right let's look at one more thing I want to show you before we save this file a nice little trick that I think everybody should know right from the get-go it's called content aware fill and what we're gonna do is one of the few things that bothers me about this image right now it's right down here on the bottom right see these the roses here and this little thing I really don't have enough of that in there and it seems to kind of distracting in this little water here I could clone this or I could use the healing brush to try to get rid of this stuff but we're going to use content aware fill and the way we're going to do that is make a selection and there's multiple ways to make a selection I'm going to use the lasso tool you can hit L or you can go right up here to your toolbar click on the little lasso and bring it down and we're going to select right around here you don't have to be too exact alright we're going to come up and there it is now another trick I'm going to show you really quick about selections if you want to add to a selection you hold the shift key and it'll make a little plus sign see the little plus sign on the lasso if you want to subtract you hold the alt key and that works on a PC or a Mac see how it adds a little minus sign so now if I wanted to get rid of that little strange curly cue right there I can do that oh look I went too far in so I hold the shift key and I do that I want to get rid of those flowers all right so there's my selection now we're gonna go up to edit and we're gonna go down to fill 
or you can hit Shift F5. That works on a PC or a Mac. And we'll click on that and this little dialog box is going to come up and you see one of the first things it says for contents it uses content aware. You have different options in here. We're not going to get into that. I just want to show you the content aware. Leave the blending modes to default and we're going to click OK. And what it's going to do is look around the selection and take its best guess and put it in there. And look at that. Voila. Now to get rid of your selection so you can see the whole image you hold Control D or Command D on a Mac and there you have it. It got rid of the little stone, the flowers, and got rid of that funny looking water that we had in there. And it looks like it was like that from the get-go. Content aware fill in CS5 can save you a lot of time. Uh, try it first. If it doesn't work, go back to the clone tool or the healing brush and use those. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. See, we can shut that layer off and we can see the difference. So I like the way it is. So I'm going to flatten this image so that I don't have two layers. Two layers will make my file bigger and I don't really feel that I need to have that extra layer right now so I'm going to flatten this and the fastest way to do that you can go up to where it says layer and go down towards the bottom it says flatten image and the see the layer went away but our corrections did not and now we're going to save this we're going to go up to file save as and we're going to leave the name the same as the raw file and it's a tiff I'm going to have the ICC profile Adobe 1998 already checked off leave that just like it is and we're going to go save. Image compression, I'm not going to compress this TIFF file. You can choose to if you want. The only reason why you do this is if you don't have enough space on your computer and you want to try to save room. I don't do it. I have plenty of space on my hard drives. Uh, if you are going to compress it, I would suggest using the LZW as it's faster to open than the zip one. Pixel order, I just leave this alone. And byte order, you can choose Macintosh or IBM. I haven't noticed any difference using either one. If you're on a PC, choose the PC. If you're on a Mac, choose the Mac. Uh, again, I've used files from both computers and not had any issues whatsoever. And then we're going to go OK. And if you notice, our tab has changed from the camera raw to the TIFF, and the image is now saved. Well, that's it for this video. I'm sure you still have questions, and we have more videos coming out that will answer some of those questions. If there's a particular video that you would like to see, please. Uh, get in contact with us at Learn My Shot and we'll work on those videos for you. Until then, have a great day.